could uh, rename yourselves. If you're a RAC member, please put RAC in front of your uh, name and then also add your uh, the entity you're representing um, at the end. If you are an alternate RAC member, please put ALT RAC in front of your name as well as entity representing. That'll help the uh, list organize itself for our facilitator. For uh, the uh, RAC members, if you could please have your video on for the meeting, that would uh, assist with the display and organization. And if you are a, a member of the public joining and listening in today, if you could uh, please have yourself uh, muted and have your video turned off, that would be appreciated. And we will uh, get to you if you're of interest in providing a public comment, there is an opportunity towards the end of the meeting today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Sam Imperati, the RAC1 facilitator. Um, I hope you see on your screen um, the agenda, uh, which was sent out um, yesterday. I'm going to go through it item by item quickly so we have a good picture as to what we'll be doing today. Um, obviously, this is uh, the welcome that Tim just did and the agenda review. So um, we'll talk about it, uh, a new document that that's posted on the website that we'll share in a minute, the RAC participation meeting instructions. Uh, there was some confusion as to who gets to take the poll, um, and that is basically RAC members or their alternates, but not both the RAC member and the alternate. We have a new document that ODF did as a result of last Thursday's initial RAC 2 meeting, and it distinguishes between the two RACs and what the scope is and is not. Since most of you were on that call, it will be familiar. Here's the bulk of the work today, the WUI definition. So in a nutshell, um, I sent the homework. Uh, you have read it. We'll um, just go over the executive summary, which is five or six lines. Any questions for clarification about the structure of the document, not the substance per se. And a reminder that we're only developing the definition uh, today without defining each of the words in the definition and without regard to the criteria and its applications. That's gonna be done after the RAC submits its definition. And then ODF will make its WUI definition, which of course is the international definition. And Tim will discuss, and you will all have an opportunity to discuss where that definition is used, for what purposes is it used, is it used by others, um, what are the results on the ground, both positive and negative. We'll discuss the advantages and disadvantages of using an existing definition or um, using the RAC-created version, which was the thrust of your homework, and we will poll accordingly. Uh, Tim will then introduce the fiscal impact statement uh, portion of your charge, discuss the various components and the uh, primary purpose of next week's meeting on the 17th is to look at the ODF staff recommendation for the fiscal impact statement and add your perspectives and comment uh, accordingly. We'll have the public comment period and next steps and that next meeting um, it, which is the fi uh, final meeting in the first series of RAC 1 is the staff report on the RAC 1 MUI definition and the fiscal impact statement. As usual, we'll, we'll have some homework. There'll be a meeting evaluation and closing comments. So that's the overview of the, the agenda. Does any uh, member of the RAC have any uh, questions, comments, or suggestions restated? Um, is there a place on this agenda for you to raise the topics that were important for you to raise today? And if so, if you could um, just raise your, your uh, button and uh, one of the ODF people will tell me whose hands are raised so I can call on you. Last call. Uh, we appreciate uh, uh, your observations and if something comes up along the way, of course, please do it. Uh, we have Kyle Williams as his uh, hand raised. Kyle, take it away. Man, I don't know what the the emotion, the emoticons are just kicking my butt right now. I don't know how to work this thing, but I was just trying to raise my hand. Sorry, Sam. Um, 
So two, two things, uh, apologies. I have to step out uh, at 10, 15. I'm gonna try and make it quick for about 15, 20 minutes. Um, and, and Mark Long or Roger Byer can cover for me while I'm gone. And then the other one, quick question on the not defining the words within the definition. Sam, I, uh, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, wouldn't it be important to know what interface versus intermix means if we're trying to make a decision on those kind of words? Tim, I'll, t I'll get, uh, toss that question uh, to you as the main lead for ODM. Yep. Well, uh, that's a great question. Um, those two terms to, uh, tie more into the criteria used to identify what the wildland urban interface is, as opposed to the, um, the, the general definition that the uh, RAC is considering today. So that will be coming into the into the future work of those terms in themselves, how they're that is part of the identification and the criteria used to uh, um, to identify the wildland urban interface based on the definition. Hmm. Maybe someone smarter than me knows what that how that's going to play out, but I'll I'll I will buckle up and we'll see how the conversation goes. Great. Any other hand raises? We have a uh, Dave, 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 take it away, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Uh, so uh, just following up on what Kyle just said, it sounds to me like we're going to be talking about a definition in a vacuum uh, without knowing I I exactly what the import of the definition uh, that, we're, that we're going to be discussing, which uh, seems to me to be an exercise in futility, but uh, if that's the way the RAC wants to operate, I guess that's what we'll do. Tim, any response? That's the uh, that's the plan for today, um, and the, with the uh, uh, staff explanation of why we're uh, why we're recommending the international we definition to hopefully address your your uh, comments. Any other members of the RAC have any comments on the overall agenda? And I, I am not um, forgetting Dave and Kyle's uh, comments. Um, I'm asking you uh, if you would be so kind as to wait till we get to the substantive discussion of those topics, and then you will be able to have full uh, reign on uh, making the comments you deem necessary and appropriate. Any last call on the agenda, Lauren Smith. Hi, yeah, I just, I guess I just kind of wanted a second. I, I'm having some concerns about the, the not considering the downstream because I'm not sure how, for example, local governments would be able to determine a fiscal impact of this definition without knowing what it affects. Um, so it kind of, I guess I just, we can talk about it later, but I, I do have a lot of concerns about that because I don't know how, um, I would be able to adequately determine a fiscal impact without knowing that. And um, first of all, I wanted to know if that was your alternate that was appearing with you in the screen just now. Yes, that is Cole. He is an excellent uh, policymaker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> and I think Cole just uh, raised his concerns uh, as you were hanging up. Uh, we have uh, next up. We have John Jennings. Yeah, I just want to just jump in here real quick and say, you know, I appreciate what folks are saying. I don't think this is an exercise of futility. I mean, it seems to me more like starting at the beginning. Um, you know, where you have a and our, our program is is designed that way too. You know, with our, our statewide planning goals then flow to administrative rules, which interpret and apply those. And so I, I feel like we're starting at the beginning, um, and and then how that's interpreted and applied will naturally flow from that. Uh, and also, I guess I would also say, I'm not, um, I, I, I'm not sure about, about the fiscal impact and to the extent that there could be one at this juncture. I don't know that this definition in and, in and of itself does much. So, um, I mean, I, I'm sensitive to the fiscal, the fiscal impact we need to be, um, but again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, um, I, I don't have a high level of anxiety about that. At, at this juncture, I'm, again, I'm not sure that just the the, the establishment of a definition um, 
you know, does uh, does it. It's more, I think it'll be more about how the definition is applied and, and, and what application uh, of, the, of the definition means. So thanks guys, I just wanted to jump in there. So uh, Tim, I, I wanted to give you an opportunity to respond to Lauren and Cole's concern about the, uh, the fiscal impact downstream ramifications. Yeah, um, I believe that as we uh, walk through that uh, that section of the agenda, that uh, we'll have that um, question answered, and we can address it as as a group at that time. So I'm going to uh, put forth and take a facilitator risk here and put forth a, a suggestion. Um, the, these processes uh, tend to be linear and circular. My suggestion for your consideration, RAC members is that we take them one at a time, but I will end the meeting with an opportunity to say, all right, here's what you've done conditionally uh, on the definition and some fiscal impact statement before, um, after we get th through both of those, let's go back. And now that we've had a more robust conversation, you'll have the opportunity to make any refinements to the WUI definition, for instance, so that uh, you're not precluded and we can move forward and see the big picture. I think that way you'll have an opportunity to, it's, in other words, it's not gonna be last call at 1126 per se, if the fiscal impact statement discussion uh, gives you reason for pause and concern. Is that fair? It give you some, some solace there? So some noddings of heads, uh, we'll take that um, and, and, and be flexible going forward. The, uh, the next document uh, that I really just wanna share briefly with you um, is, uh, and, and this will be posted on the website and Tim ran through a lot of these things, but you know, if you are a RAC member, uh, again, as you've, figured out the protocol, put your rack, your name in the organization. And then to get into the speaking queue, just raise your hand. For those of you rack members who are on the phone, just take yourself off mute and, and tell me your name and affiliation and say you'd like to get in the queue. And then of course, use the chat function to record major points and questions. And ODF team will be queuing me as to uh, what is in the chat. For RAC uh, alternatives, you're gonna just change your first name so we know for attendance purposes, you're a RAC. As I mentioned on the polling, it's RAC members or alternatives only, but only one vote per organization. So to be clear, um, if there's both a RAC member and an alternate, um, uh, one of you uh, gets to vote per organization. And um, as usual, the observers, please, uh, please close your camera and then open it when we come forward. Also remember to mute your mic. For the members of the public that are looking here, there are various uh, website and email addresses that you can send your comments to and process questions. So that's that piece. Next up uh, in the agenda is uh, what we are affectionately referring to as the one pager. And um, as a result of the first RAC2 meeting on Thursday, ODF put together this uh, one pager that defines um, the RAC1 in the green on the left-hand column, RAC2 in uh, the purplish blue on the right-hand column, and looks at the charges of each. So I think it's important um, and ha happy to answer any, have Tim answer any questions about this, but in the both column, the middle column, what's outside the scope of both racks is the uh, defensible space components, section eight through 10 of the bill and the building code section 12 of the bill. Uh, both of those sections are um, outside of uh, rack one and rack two. Uh, we've also provided timelines um, and that's an explanation of the um, pace at which we're going. So I'll open it up to RAC member questions about the, the uh, RAC scopes and charge for RAC 1, RAC 2, and what's outside the scope for both. 
Any RAC member comments, questions? Last call. Hearing uh, none, feel free to send them in if you uh, think of them uh, uh, later. So what's up next is the, the, the meat and potatoes of, of this particular process today, and that is working on the uh, definition going forward. So um, uh, as promised, I'm only going to cover the executive summary and answer any questions for clarification about the structure of the document. Uh, we know you've all had time. Um, to read it short as it was, the initial draft went out on Friday, and the things in yellow are, are simply the additions that I sent to you last night. So we got 18 responses. Uh, we appreciate that. The more participation, the better. Uh, we made a tactical decision for good, neutral, and bad not to poll on existing definitions. Uh, they were there as a beginning, and you'll see we'll deal with them today. They will be the focus of uh, today's meeting uh, with this document as a context. We um, uh, wanted to prime the pump by getting any hybrid definitions and see what they look like. Um, on section uh, item number three here, each RAC member's first choice poll definition appears in, in section three. So I took the survey results. Um, the last question on the survey or the poll was taking um, all your first choice issues. How would you define it? We summarized them there. They uh, were um, then the section uh, D is your detailed responses on each of the choices for the sentence uh, going forward. And then um, for purposes of, uh, of trying to pull together potential hybrid dis, uh, definitions, item five in the executive summary says that if we took the, uh, the top responses by section, uh, by RAC member, the definition would be a wildland uh, urban interface means the geographical area where human development meets wildland fuels. That, if you will, was the emerging consensus of a blended uh, approach. Uh, at, as you heard Tim preview, and I said in the document, ODF is going to propose the international WUI definition, which is the geographical area or structures and other human development meets or intermingles with uh, wildland vegetative fuels. And then um, there is additional information, Thousand Friends uh, provided uh, WUI definitions from the other Western states. And Erica Fisher was uh, not able to be there, provided some questions at the end. So that is um, in a nutshell what this document says. Are there any questions or comments uh, uh, about the structure of the document or what the various uh, materials mean and then we'll, uh, after we resolve them, we'll move right into a robust discussion um, uh, about uh, Tim's definition um, proposal for ODF and move forward. So any questions on the document per se? Uh, Amanda Astor. Uh, yes, thank you, Sam. So one question I had under section E for the uh, kind of combined definition that you created here, uh, where there exists uh, write-ins or additional uh, options that were chosen, how did you go about choosing uh, which one was the top choice? For instance, uh, for the second poll option, uh, you said that where was the top choice at 10, uh, but there were uh, three additional plus the eight that included uh, the word concentration of. So how did a uh, where beat out where a concentration of? Let me find that one specifically here. Uh, so I, I, under the category of explanation, not justification, we've been doing this on a ready fire aim basis with little time in between. I simply, looked at this particular poll results and and um, 
and this had 10 and this had eight. And please understand that th there is no tactical advantage per se in the, the fact that uh, the, the 10 is where and where a concentration of was an eight. It is simply a quick and dirty way to show that there is so much similarity in, on the surface of these terms. I totally appreciate that the devil's in the detail as, uh, as, as for instance, Dave was pointing out earlier ab about the definition and you are gonna have a full opportunity to decide if where versus where a concentration of is, is the better term. It was simply a, here it is almost frankly to be candid at a cocktail party level understanding just to give you an idea of what people said. So please do not feel you're advantaged or disadvantaged or anyone is advantaged or disadvantaged by simply taking the top choice. Okay, thanks. I was just, again, trying to better understand how you uh, came up with that uh, combined definition. Um, so that that's helpful, thank you. Any other questions or comments about the structure of the, of the document? Again, it's not it's not a anything binding. We're not uh, relying on it. it. It's simply a here's a quick and dirty summary of what y'all said in the poll at an executive summary level. The devil's in the details, as Amanda just pointed out. There's not much of a distinction between ten points and eight points uh, between where and, and, and concentration. Any other questions or comments about uh, what we're to, to, I attempted to do? with the data summary. You're free to interpret it any way you want to, obviously. Hearing none, uh, further, I will turn it over uh, to Tim and he will make a present his presentation on ODF's recommendation. Thank you, Sam. Let me see if I can get this thing to launch correctly finally. Hmm. Okay, then. Just had my Zoom reinstalled, so I'm having some set setting. There you go. Okay, is it showing the presentation mode or the actual? Uh, you should hit the, the lower, so you have the full screen versus the partial screen. So hit the little icon to the right there, just to the right, right there. That should get us into, get you into full screen. Just share screen number one. How's that? There you go. Okay. Um, good morning, everyone. For um, for the record, my name is Tim Holschbach. I serve as the Deputy Chief of Policy and Planning with the Oregon Department of Forestry. I appreciate you all joining us this morning. Um, for the uh, we're going to go over the uh, staff analysis of the uh, wildland urban interface definitions and uh, and walk through uh, why this um, ODF is recommending the International Wooly Code as the basis for the definition. As similar to the, to the exercise, we, utilize, we uh, perform analysis on the uh, US Forest Service definition, International Wooly Code, the National Fire Protection Associ Association, also commonly known as a FireWise, the National Wire Fire Coordinating Group, Ready, Set, Go, what was previously enacted in law under the uh, Oregon Forest Land Urban Interface Wild, Wild Land, Wildfire Protection Act, or commonly known as SB 360, and also what is in the Federal Register. As we walked through these, these particular definitions, we looked, uh, we looked at them a little more holistically at what the, defin is, what, the defin is, what the definition is, what it's used for in its, some of its long-term effects to find the best one that doesn't have implications, but also um, provides good framework and also flexibility to be utilized and uh, made applicable to the state of Oregon. 
Um, with these definitions, the one the U.S. Forest Service utilizes as well, it is very similar to what's in the Federal Register. Those two uh, definitions in particular um, have um, other aspects to them that are that were deemed prescriptive and would seem that um, as they, we got into their criteria discussions that there would be um, less flexibility in implementation um, in a manner that would uh, allow the Rules Advisory Committee to actually uh, provide input and advice to the department. So those uh, those two were re removed from that. Um, the organ, the OR, or SB 360 was based within force protection districts that was reviewed of reference in respect to the others. The National Fire Protective Association Firewise, um, NWCG is a definition and ready, set, go are commonly used as educational models, but not, um, not generally used to identify specific areas um, identified in how we would provide a framework in what will end up being a future regulatory context. So those three in their educational basis were also removed from consideration in that effect. So moving forward with the international WUI code, it's the, the geo, that geographic area where structures and other human development meets or intermingles with wild wildland vegetative fuels. As we walk through the uh, the uh, the exercise, the homework that was done last week, and looked at which uh, keywords were um, real, rose highest to the list. This definition also fit well within close synonyms of those words, um, as well as fit, uh, fitting into identif identifiable areas that could be have that can have a uh, criteria developed around um, these key structures that are, are these key uh, uh, phrases within the definition to help establish that criteria framework. The international WUI code itself it corresponds to natural and man-made features, and it's based on housing units. That's a central focus of this uh, definition, as well as this uh, framework in general. It's also updated every three years, which moves into a, a mechanisms to have a forward-focused definition that, that is living, more so as something static or that can be outdated. It also has algorithms that are based on the census data um, as uh, that documents housing growth across the US. So each census, it uh, has the, um, the algorithms to help build in growth, which in its, in its basis is the expansion of the WUI as future development, of course. It, uh, it provides for a context for um, integration of land cover over a historical context, as well as the integration of the uh, changes with the census block. While it's largely based on definitions in the federal register, it, the framework itself defers to local input and, uh, and development of how that framework's applied, as opposed to being prescriptive under the US Forest Service, um, where it had established terms for identification of the WUI. This would allow more flexibility within the within this, uh, this group to allow for uh, proper identification of, of the wildland urban interface and how to, and how to identify it. As far as what is considering national best practices, the uh, wildland or the international WUI code is the national best practice in the Western United States. Um, with its adoption in, a, in near all of the um, states west of the Mississippi. So it's a, as far as the meeting that national threshold, it is consistent with, uh, with that uh, portions of the law. Again, it provides a, a framework for regulations for safeguard life and property from the intrusion of wildfire, also for, to prevent structure fires from spreading to um, wildland fuels. That framework is also has development aspects for future defensible space and construction requirements that is to be developed as, um, in future rulemaking under Senate Bill 762. So fit the consistency of what was uh, identified in, in the bill, as well as meeting national uh, the, those national best practices. And primarily, it's founded on data from tests and actual fire instances and um, taken into account to help establish that framework.
So and I'm going to stop the sharing. Let's uh, open it up uh, to RAC member, um, you know, questions for clarification first, and then we will discuss, um, you know, what are the advantages and disadvantages of that particular uh, recommendation. And then we, we will look at whether or not um, this group is interested in uh, adopting or recommending an existing recommendation like international, and if so, which one, and then secondarily, if not, which one. So I think I have Mark Long first. Thanks, Sam. I have a question for Tim. Hey, Tim, on slide four, I believe it's slide four, the top bullet, can you help me understand what that means? The corresponding natural or man-made features and are based on housing units. Is that a, I know that when we went through um, the the Explorer, there was a, I, don't quote me because I can't remember the details, but there was a housing, um, if you will, density component. Is, is that what this means or does it mean something different? Yes, this is one that uh, referenced housing units, which is a uh, word that some of the other uh, focus of the, the bill in particular, um, it made particular sense that the re most of its focus on structures of our human habitations. So that's why we uh, emphasize this one with the, with the housing units. But yeah, there will be um, for to be able to calculate and identify the wildland urban interface as the space between the wildland and urban, there will be some tie ins with uh, with uh, structure density. So just OK, but it, is there background for what that is? Um, or is that something that needs to be determined in the future? Just trying to get a set. That, that will be part of the criteria development um, as we move forward. Um, the, the two federal definitions uh, with the register were, as I mentioned, very prescriptive of what that means. Mm -hmm. So um, this allows the, uh, the uh, um, Oregon to be able to um, have that flexibility and establish the framework, but be able to identify through uh, what's most appropriate for our particular um, um, uh, building layouts and last, community development. Last question on this bullet point, and then I'll have some later, but I want to let the others have a chance. Um, so is this, is this density of housing units or structures or both? That would be as, and again, in, in the criteria development as we, as we move forward in this process over the next few months of walking through that as in discussions within the rules advisory committee here. So okay. I don't want to make that decision necessarily for you all, but um, that will be part of the criteria development as we uh, put the, the work plan together that'll be uh, uh, presented at the meeting on the 17th. Okay, so- if I get, a little ahead of myself there. <laughs> I, I got it. I, I'm not trying to get you into a, into a corner, but I want to just flag that piece of the conversation, hear from others, and then if, if I can come back to that, if that's okay. Absolutely. And just, and a lot of these, uh, the comments, I really appreciate the comments that get into the criteria, but because uh, what our staff is doing as we're listening into these conversations as we're developing is this is part of the criteria components that we're going to have to have staff recommendations prepared for the, for the committee to consider at a future date. So I really appreciate this context now, but as a, um, as with the focus on the definition is what's at the issue at hand at the moment. So I have Michelle and then Dave in the queue. Michelle, please take it away. Right, good morning. I have a question or a clarification for Tim. So on the map, it has states with statewide or local adoption, but it doesn't reference is that the orange or the gray. Sorry, that was the orange states were the ones that had the, uh, that adopted the international okay. week code as their uh, basis for their framework. Thank you. Dave? Thanks, Sam and, and Tim. Uh, Tim, following up on what Mark said, I like the, I liked the conversation that the two of you were having uh, about housing density, but I'm struggling to understand how uh, staff can go in that direction if we were to adopt a definition that requires the WUI to include uh, anything with a structure or other human development. Now, obviously, I, I think we're being told we can't talk about what structures mean, we can't talk about what other human development means, but that, to me, uh, that, that goes far beyond uh, uh, a discussion of, of uh, housing density and requires you to map as WUI 
anything where those particular features are present. So I don't, I, I, I'm struggling to understand how you can essentially narrow uh, based on the broad definition that you're proposing. Uh, human development is on the list of criteria to be uh, identified and defined. So it'll be further defined of what human development means in this process. I believe that that'll be, that'll be a full meeting on itself just for that, for that discussion to add the context around, uh, around that subject. Um, so that would, uh, that does, that's the, one of the um, positives of this, in, of this definition in particular is it allows the framework, but also the, the refinement of what these terms mean can be adopted by the respective states. And in follow up, Tim, and I apologize for asking what may be a, uh, an, an ignorant question, uh, but this RAC is not going to be involved with those discussions. As I understand it, if that's correct, who is going to have the discussions about ac the actual definition of the terms? No, oh, this RAC will be involved in that. The, it was split initially with the first meeting series as focused on the definition of the went the 100 days, that first primary charge. And then the criteria is also within the scope of this rack to be determined after that, after we move to that section of the rulemaking process. So yes, this, this group will be um, addressing those uh, as they're developed. Okay, great. Thanks, Tim. Michelle, did you have a follow-up? Okay. Um, any other questions for clarification um, for Tim? I see Amanda's hand up. Amanda, please. Yeah, thank you. So, okay, just follow me uh, real quick. So I've been taking this very seriously. And uh, so the first step that I did is I went to Merriam-Webster and looked at the definition of what wildland is, what urban is, and what interface is. And so first, I just want to, you know, note that urban really is relating to cities. Uh, or I guess first it's wildland. Wildland uh, in Merriam-Webster is defined as land that is uncultivated or unfit for cultivation. Urban is of relating to characteristic of or constituting a city. And then interface mostly means um, meets is is the best that I can that I can see. Uh, or communicates with. So uh, I just want to just ask for a little bit of clarity here from you, Tim, as I look at those three words, the way that I read the, uh, the, the international WUI code with that in mind would then read that geographical area where structures and other human development in an urban setting meets or intermingles with uncultivated vegetative fuels. Now that is me kind of combining those definitions of wildland, urban, and interface with this specific definition of wooey. Now I just want to know, is that how you frame that conversation in the definition of wildland, urban, and interface? Or I'm just trying to better understand kind of how you combine the two. So those aspects would be where I would be looking at uh, um, as we develop the, the criteria of the, defining those words. Um, do we use what's on the face value of the Merriam-Webster? Do we look at where we need to use, utilize the framework that we're establishing to be able to make the um, rules pertain to the state of Oregon? So that's where I would, um, would consider that as, uh, um, you know, by def just by looking at it as face value, we're trying to identify that. I've been uh, characterizing it as a donut around cities where this, uh, where these, uh, we have risk of wildfire entering our communities. So that um, that's where I would uh, phrase that and bring it into the criteria of having um, a lab or to, uh, further refined definitions of those terms that are used in this statement. Um, the definition of wild and urban face is a little bit of a misnomer because we define singular words not statements. So we, that's where we're going to, as the criteria develops, we'll be defining the actual words in the definition as opposed to the statement that we're making in the meantime. Okay, thank you. Um, Mark? Hey, Tim. I think, um, I think some of that makes sense. Just one thing I want to flag for you 
Um, and, and I think you know that for some of us, the word structure is problematic. The problem that I see for you is we've tied into the WUI standard, which is the international code standard, and that term is defined. And so I'm curious how we could get at that. I, I understand some of the other more uh, broad terms we can kind of get into the scoping, but because this establishes the scope, because it aligns with those model codes, as you mentioned, one of the bullets, and because that specific term is already defined, and I kind of walk you through what it means, um, I just think you have a problem then being able to get back to what we just previously discussed as far as how we look at the density and what's included and what isn't. So happy to walk you through that, but um, I just I just would discourage you from from uh, using that WUI in its from the ICC in its whole because it does tie into some terms that are found throughout the code, and I think it's going to cause some troubles down the road. I appreciate that uh, uh, you flagging that. Um, what I was looking at with this definition was uh, structures as opposed to structure, and with the plurality of allowing us to define that um, consistent with some other um, references. But I, uh, with that, uh, with the framework in place, I believe we do have the flexibility to uh, to be able to uh, make sure that it's applicable to the, this state in particular. But I appreciate that uh, that concern. I just think it's going to create, I'll, I'll, I'll shut up after this, but I think it'll create some downstream problems because the regulators that are going to go uh, in the field are going to tie back into those ICC definitions as a natural part of their training. And I think that's just going to create some confusion for you. So I certainly hope we can have a chance to look at that specific term uh, and maybe come up with something different. Thank you. So the uh, current queue of RAC members um, is uh, John Jennings followed by Jim McCauley. Um, I'm going to, again, use the facilitator privilege of calling on Representative Paul Evans. While not a formal member of the RAC, I always want to give deference to elected officials um, as opposed to uh, to other members of the public who will have an opportunity during the public comment period. So, uh, Representative Evans, uh, good morning. Uh, good morning. I just wanted to say uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to join, and I'll make this comment, and I won't need to talk later in the agenda. Uh, I, I guess I'm here to encourage uh, that... Uh, this organization was charged to come up with a definition that is both usable and more importantly for my friends in the legislature, some with third grade educations, uh, explainable to the public. And uh, as this work continues, I just want to encourage you at some point, if you could put a pole down and then build the tent around it. Um, I'm concerned that after reading the notes, uh, maybe there's been a lot of discussion and that's good, uh, but I know my colleagues and if you all don't come up with a definition within the time frame, we will be more than happy to choose, but I'm not sure that's going to make everybody happy if we do it. So I'm here on behalf of my colleagues to gently nudge and encourage uh, getting a definition uh, sooner than later, because uh, there are many people on all sides of this thing waiting for an answer. Uh, some will probably be disappointed at the end of the day. Probably everybody in some ways will be disappointed. But your work is very critical, and we need it to be very timely. So thank you for what you're doing, and I hope to be reading the results uh, after this meeting and the meeting that comes, seeing a little more finer point on the definition. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Um, Jim. It looks like Jim stepped away for a second. We'll come back to him. John G uh, Jennings. Hey, thanks, Sam, and everybody else. I just guess I wanted to kind of go through my understanding of sort of the order of operations, and I know this is redundant. You guys have already done this, but uh, but the um, the RAC is positioned to uh, assist the Department of Forestry staff in making recommendations to the Board of Forestry on this point, uh, which I understand will be taken up and and considered by the Board of Forestry later this month, um, and then when that is settled. This RAC will move into the conversation about criteria, um, 
those types of items that will likely result culminate in a recommendation that would go to the Board of Forestry in, in March. And so I think that's how that goes. Um, and then, then before I forget, before I forget, I guess I was just curious and um, interested in, in some of the, the other things I heard there is that I, does, would, would relying on this international definition, um, you know, it's a definition, but it, does it, 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 does it in any way obligate uh, Oregon regulatory agencies to any particular arrangement? I mean, is it, does it, does it obligate um, Oregon to follow some international or national regulations that were not otherwise or wouldn't otherwise apply? So I guess first question, in order of operations, did I get that right? Second, you know, are, are we are we setting our setting ourselves up to follow um, rules that are not Oregon uh, based provisions necessarily that we wouldn't otherwise do? Uh, yeah. That's a great question, John. Um, so the uh, the adoption of this as the basis of the definition does not obligate the state in any manner to implement the international WUI code. Um, it's just the one um, Oregon administrative rule that is utilizing this definition, stating it um, as this is the definition. If uh, if the definite if their international will be associate or if that group went and updated the definition, it, that update would not automatically change or impact this definition either. So it'll be a solely um, ODF rule that is uh, referenced. So just to, just to follow up real quick, so, so that I I I'm confident I understand is it. <clears throat> so when Oregon adopts this language. It, it, it be, whatever that may be, but when Oregon adopts it, 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 then then that becomes Oregon's language, and Oregon may use it as it sees fit. Yes, is that, is that right? Correct. Great, thank you, sir. Uh, Jim. Yeah, thank you. Um, that was actually a pretty good question. I was almost going to ask it um, because I think from the front end of this. Some of the interests had concerns about, again, adopting a national code and what that would do to Oregon's uh, overall implementation. So, um, Tim, this is a goes back a couple of minutes and stuff when you were conversation about structures. So, if I'm listening correctly here, once we get to the finer detail, we'll actually be able to get into what a structure is represented. So, we're not dealing with counting, again, we'll take one extreme outhouses versus something that is livable as far as a dwelling goes versus a storage shed or some, there's going to be some kind of additional detail to what that's represented. Is that fair? That is correct. Structures will have to be defined in the criteria. Okay. Did you have I think any the only, follow up, Jim? I think the only other point is I think Amanda's, you know, um, comments or narrative earlier on do make some sense to consider as at least an overlay as we're going through this. I mean, again, we're not trying to define our rural interface zone. This really is focused in on that urban component. And I think that's something for us to really um, focus in on um, as we go forward and stuff. I mean, again, look at the existing fire uh, fires that are on there out there right now, trying to look at that. At least I am trying to look at that in terms of some type of an overlay and where you want to concentrate your efforts down the road. So um, just put a plug in for that as well. Thank you, Jim. Roger. Thank you, Sam. Uh, I'd just like to uh, throw out here, I guess, that uh, listening to what Representative Evans had to say and about how the legislature would be more than happy to define this if we don't do it quickly. Uh, on that note, I'd like to point out that the first two versions of this bill did have a definition in, in them, uh, and that definition was what the International Louis Code is, which what's being proposed now by Department of Forestry staff, and that version, neither of those versions passed the legislature. So now to grab that definition that didn't pass and try to put that in as the definition, uh, to me, doesn't seem to make sense. And, and I would argue that uh, we should go back to the, the definition which was existed in statute prior to 762. Uh, you have it listed as the uh, SB 360 legislation and work on a modification of that because as I understood it, being part of those discussions during the session, 
the the problem with that definition was the fact that it focused only on areas forest land inside of forest protective districts and and that was the concern with that current language and so if we would go back to a definition that includes the parts of SB 360 where exists a concentration of structures in an urban or suburban setting but get rid of the areas inside the forest protective district I think we, we have a better chance of consensus on this and it would more closely align to what the legislature was not able to do which was define this in statute. Thank you Roger. Uh, Pam? Thanks so much. I really appreciate a moment to chat. Um, so many good points have been raised here. I do want to just put in for the record an argument for adopting the International Wooey Code as I see it. One of the things that I encounter in my role is I spend an awful lot of time with firefighters talking about the actual impact of fire on houses and in the Wooey. And I, I know there's some fire chiefs here who can actually speak to that far better than I can. Um, but they haven't spoken up yet, <laughs> so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to speak up now. And one of the things that I realize as I chat with those folks is that moving forward into the future, um, this business about how do we protect urban areas from increasingly significant wildfires and increasingly high intensity wildfires is a global conversation at this point. And there are best practices that people are developing here in the Western United States, but also in Greece and Turkey, in Australia and New Zealand and all sorts of other places that are having enormous fires. And what I would recommend is looking at the best practices that have been already sorted out by those folks and where we have a very good reason, where we have a specific Oregon reason to deviate from those, let's do so but let's have a really good reason to deviate from those. Like, let's have a, a reason better than, you know, well, we did it this way in the past um, or something along those lines. And I just really encourage us to stand on the shoulders of the people who have done the good work before to the extent that we can. I've heard a lot of other very good reasons why we should adopt an international WUI code and step up with the rest of most of the rest of the United States at this point who has adopted this. Um, with that, I will let it go. Thank you. Thank you, Pam. Any other members of, of the RAC have any questions for Tim or observations they like to share with the group? And it would really be helpful we heard from everyone on the rack so we make everyone knows where all of you um, are in this moment in time recognizing that your opinions can evolve um bob uh on your recommendation sam yeah i'd be be happy to just share a uh, bob horton from jackson county fire district three fire chief um, I love the discussion. I, I, my understanding also was that it, by adopting the international WUI code that there still was the opportunity for there to be flexibility for an organ centric definition downstream from this. Um, so I, I we're in, I'm in support of the, the adoption of the international WUI code. Uh, and I just wanted to share my understanding from the legislature. Of course, I wasn't there, so I can't speak firsthand, uh, was a choice just not to define it in the legislation, not a rejection of the particular definition that was being considered, uh, but rather a reference to other Western states who had not uh, def also defined WUI in their legislation, but instead through rulemaking. So that was my understanding was a consensus and, and, and Senate Bill 762 was to uh, drive this process to definition, but was not a, a rejection of the international WUI definition. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Lauren? Yeah, I was just gonna chime in um, following up on uh, Roger's comment to say that I think um, from my understanding of a lot of the discussions with legislators uh, while we were talking about this definition was, uh, not necessarily that the definition, you know, was, you know, something they didn't buy into, but it was all the unknowns of that further clarification, which is why I really feel that every single word in that definition matters. And it was the unknown of that further clarification that, that of what, of what that definition meant that they were uncomfortable with. So 
that's where I'm really struggling right now is that I don't think that without that further clarification of what each of those, the, you know, those words means like structures or whatever, and, and pushing that on down the line is going to be something that I can, I can say, yeah, I fully support this definition, knowing that those clarifications are coming, because I don't know what those clarifications, clarifications are going to look like. And that's where I'm really struggling. Thank you, Roger. Yes, thank you. Uh, yeah, I understand some of the concerns uh, that have been voiced around that. You know, I do support uh, the international code uh, rule definition. It's pretty consistent with a lot of the others, whether it's NFPA, US Fire Administration, uh, BLM, or, or some of the others. I think the majority of it lines up and certainly need to have some of those further discussions down the road, but I support it as the foundational definition for this group. Thank you. Other members of the RAC who haven't had an opportunity yet to share their views and perspectives. Uh, Kyle and then Amelia. Thanks, Sam. And at the risk of, of treading water we already have, I apologize again for having to step out. I, I'm trying to get caught up to speed with the conversation. It sounds like the topic is uh, moving forward with the international WUI code definition, but the words themselves get defined in the next step. Am I tracking that correctly? Tim I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Tim Naughty. Okay. That'd be Naughty correct, Kyle. Affirmatively, yes, that is the proposed ODF process. Okay. Okay. Well, I, you know, I think it'd be the same as everybody on this. Like, not fully knowing where that ends up. It, there's always a. a, a modicum of, uh, I don't know, um, but uh, just, I guess, so I could put that on the record, it, th that there's a level of discomfort not knowing what the outcome is going to be, but um, I, and at least I'm caught up with the conversation, so appreciate that. No problems. Amelia. Thanks, um, and I uh, appreciate Kyle's question clarifying that, because I think that's, um, to me, um, this group is going to have those discussions. And so I think for all of us who have those um, uh, interests in uh, understanding the details, um, I think we're all going to be a part of refining that. And um, just want to underscore um, that we also support the International Wood Code as, uh, as recommended and um, uh, you know, looking forward to more discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Any other members of the RAC? John? And yeah, then... I'm gonna, thanks, Sam. I'm gonna yield my time to, or at least leave my place for now to Holly Kearns. I know she, I'd like to get her voice in the room because I respect what uh, she has to say on behalf of the county planning directors, but I, I just had a comment or two if I, if I got time later. You will, I'll call on you after Holly and anyone else that joins the queue who hasn't spoken yet will get preference. Holly? Thank you. Uh, I was just really, thinking about what Representative Evans had said about how um, how important it is to create a usable and explainable definition uh, for the public. And I think that the definition as proposed is a little too broad to do that. It doesn't quite meet the charge, I think, that, that he had highlighted. I can support the concept of it if we could get a little more clarity on those words and um, a little more refinement uh, within the definition, but I guess my concern is that it it doesn't have enough. Um, it's not specific enough to really function as a, a definition. And uh, knowing that this certainly will have meaning later down the road, I think that getting a finer point on it is really important. Thank you. Any other RAC member who hasn't had an opportunity to speak, and then I'll call on John. John, take it away. Thanks. If I knew what Holly was going to say, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't let her go ahead of me. I'm, te I'm teething, of course, and she knows that. Um, I guess uh, my question was just, just simply this. Re regardless of what definition is settled on, wouldn't we still have to go through the, the, the process contemplated for September forward? I mean, I, I, know, I, I know what ours looked like, and I think I know what most others looked like. And they're all they're all pretty, um, you know, comprised of pretty broad terms. So I guess 
I, all I want to do, I guess, is confirm that um, that whether it's this WUI definition or someone else's, it was it, when it, it would still require some pretty significant consideration to understand what what was meant by the terms in that one sentence or two. Does that make sense? I mean, my question makes sense. I mean, I guess I'm saying I don't know that it's possible to settle on a definition that is, you know, absolutely self-executing, self-defining, means everything in one in one fell swoop, right? We would have to go through that second process. So um, I'm going to try to um, summarize what I believe some members of the RAC are saying, and Tim, this is directed specifically um, towards ODF for purposes of a response. I think some of, of the concern um, is that ODF's process is suggesting that this rack make a recommendation to the department, which then makes a recommendation um, uh, as far as a staff report, and that is filed with the Secretary of State on August 28th. There'll be public hearings in September, and then there'll be an October special board meeting of the Board of Forestry to make a uh, decision on the quote unquote wooey definition. That's the timeline or order as they understand it, and, and frankly, as I understand it. The anxiety or concern is that the department is asking the RAC to defer the definitions of the key terms in that sentence till after they make their recommendation. And because these words have meaning and are important and could be used uh, by ODF and other potential agencies to say something is within or without the WUI, that that creates um, the concern that they've given their imprimatur to a definition that the definition changes. So the question that I'm asking, um, as I understand it from talking to ODF in preparation for this meeting and, and the previous ones, is but for the legislative 100 day deadline, ODF would have been ready, willing and able to have a first part of RAC1 process long enough to in fact provide those definitions of terms. But that's not the uh, hand you were dealt and so by legislative necessity, there's been this requirement that you get the, the bald definition, undefined definition done, and then go in and backfill. So, it, so the question then becomes, what if this RAC makes a recommendation that the department um, supports in its recommend staff report to ODF and ODF adopts it. And then we get into phase two of RAC one and all of a sudden, all these words like what is and is not a structure, what is the difference um, uh, between some of these terms that really make a difference uh, change? What, what, how, is, how is ODF what, going to handle that or, or ask of the RAC then? And I'm sorry for long-winded, but I wanted to frame it as broadly as possible so you could give your game plan. So that is a very accurate summary. And I made me think of the, I thought the WUI definition was long outside of this, uh, you describing the process we're under. So I think the, the characterization of the process is correct, um, generally. I would not recommend moving rules this fast without a legislative mandate. But for the sake, we have a legislative mandate in this effect for a very specific task. That is why this rules advisory committee is organized the way it is with a specific scope and work plan over the next 30 days to 
help facilitate the agency to meet that legislative mandate. Um, with the, uh, as far as the, the rule, the definition is itself, it would become an effective rule in early November. It would still be part of the chapter that the criteria is a portion of. Um, from my view, all of the recommended, all of the recommendations I've heard to, to the date so far are all synonyms of segments of the English language, all of which would require a definition of some sorts um, by this Rules Advisory Committee to flesh out and facilitate because by themselves, they do not, I, they would not provide enough context to identify the wildland urban interface to be able to put it on a map. And remember, we need to, that's the goal is it has to be implementable to put on a map. So um, that's the charge with, with the process um, as we walk through the criteria, um, whether it's structures or human development, those are in many times one and the same um, is the instance. And those are all within the scope of this committee itself to decide as we walk through the process um, with the rec with the future staff recommendations moving forward for this group to uh, to advise on. Well, let me cross examine you further and then open it up to the RAC members. First, you have a right to an attorney. If you cannot afford one, we will provide one for you. Um, that's it, that's it. That. So to what, what, let's say we go through part two of this RAC one process and the RAC is saying to you, whoa, whoa, all of a sudden now we're defining these terms. And while I was willing to take a leap of faith uh, on August 10th, now that these uh, significant terms are redefined 180 degrees differently than I thought, and, and there's RAC consensus surrounding that, would ODF be open when it's presenting to the board the criteria and the applications to look at this definition again in the context of that subsequent work? Because I think that's in part what you're being asked here by some members of the RAC. Yes, as, uh, as the rules are developed and the criteria are assigned, if the RAC comes to a consensus that we had a term wrong in there, that would be, um, that would be an issue to be addressed because we wanna make sure that as uh, this process develops that we can make it implementable within the state of Oregon. So that would be, would be on, on the table if there was a consensus to, to, uh, that we couldn't reach a definition of those terms. All right, so um, in, in part, um, I, I was doing my best to translate what I was hearing uh, some folks in the beginning um, mention. And um, I wanna give an opportunity for those folks uh, to do it. And I'm going to start um, with Dave because I was trying to channel your initial comments um, in the beginning and, and I want to make sure I got it right then. Um, I will call on Amanda who had uh, her hand up second. And then there's some guy named Jim Kelly. I don't know who the hell he is, but uh, he'll go third. Uh, thanks, Sam, and, and you did a good job of, of uh, expressing uh, at least my concern with where we are at this point. Uh, would the, and I guess my question is to Tim, Tim, would, would staff be willing to uh, talk uh, at the public hearing uh, in front of the board uh, with both the board and the public and let them know that, you know, given the legislative timelines, the 100-day timeline in, seven, in 762, uh, we didn't have, the RAC didn't have time to actually get into the details uh, of the definition uh, and that there, there'll be further work by the RAC to, to delve into those details. So the definition that's being recommended by staff and, and subsequently uh, adopted by the board, either the, the staff recommendation or an alternative one, uh, is still a work in progress and is subject uh, to further redefinition and possibly, uh, possibly a rewrite. I think the public, if that's, if that's where we're going, I think the public deserves to know that. 
I would, uh, I probably would not characterize it as it'd be a rewrite, but if there's a um, misfoul in the definition itself, which I don't foresee with the terms that we're defining, then I, I, you know, that will still be subject as part of the rule review chapter as the development as the criteria develops. But that's where, uh, um, but I would, I, that would be, is in my plan that we're developing the criteria and that'll further refine the process to be able to accurately identify the wildland urban interface as, as charged with SB 36 or 762. Amanda. Yeah, I'm gonna make this brief because I definitely want uh, Jim to be able to get his uh, two cents in here. But I just wanted to get on the record that, um, you know, I'm, I'm glad for the, uh, the clarification, Tim, and, and the um, tee up there, Sam, on sort of, you know, where we're going or where we could be going with the criteria and the um, definition of the terms uh, moving forward. But I, I just want to get on the record that I do think it's a bit, a bit ridiculous that, you know, if, if we're saying that in the end, uh, structures, you know, end up meaning dwellings or they end up meaning trails. You know, it, it just seems silly that we're we're identifying that we're going to change that term moving forward. If structures don't really mean structures um, or human development really mean, you know, that term actually means something else, then I think it's silly that we're proposing uh, something that we know is just going to change. Uh, so I just want to get that on the record. Um, it just, it, it seems like a very, uh, it will be a very confusing process to the public to see that we're proposing something and then changing it if that's really where we're going. But uh, I'm excited to hear what Jim has to say. Thank you, Amanda. Jim, take it away. Sure. I just want to, you know, recognize you know, everything that's been said about the way this process is imperfect. But I want to encourage the committee to uh, go ahead and uh, try to recommend uh, a, a WUI definition um, because I, I don't want to sound rude here, but I believe, correct me, Tim, if I'm wrong, that if you chose at this point um, not uh, to re make a, a recommendation that would not stop um, the uh, ODF staff from making a recommendation to the board and to the board um, adopting a WUI definition on the timeline that we've all been talking about. That's all I wanted to chime in with. Thank you, Jim. Um, let me take any last um, uh, RAC member comments, observations, or statements for the record, and then uh, we'll, we will take a preliminary poll just to get the, the sense of where the group is for purposes of moving forward. Good morning, everyone. This is Sean with OFMA. Uh, Good morning. I would be in my recommendation and based on past practices and standards and not doing those one-offs that we always kind of argue about within the fire service, always trying to stay consistent. My recommendation, my opinion, the definition of the WUI is already there. It's already there within the international standards. So I think, you know, based on our, our idea of our timelines right now, which we really don't have is we adopt the international standard and the definition of that and then build upon from there. So that's just my recommendation and my experiences with working with different standards and trying to come up and, and in my opinion, doing those one-offs from the national standards. So I think if we do that, it kind of gets into that gray area and we're trying to do something that has already been created and trying to stick with that. So that's my opinion on it. Thank you, Sean. Uh, Mark. Um, when we get to the poll, I'm going to be a, a no on the proposed definition, but I wanted to let um, Tim, uh, I appreciate what you're up against with the deadline and uh, where you're at. And I just suggest an alternative for you to consider. And that is you do have an existing definition. It's in statute. It's 477015. Obviously, it's too narrow because it's limited to the, um, and you know this stuff better than I do, the forest protection areas. You simply could take what you already have and broaden that up and use that as your starting point. Um, I think you could get folks a little bit more comfortable with where you're headed by working within that framework. It ties into what I've heard here already that there's an existing definition. It's been in statute since, since 97 or 99, and it ties into a lot of what we're all familiar with. So 
with that. Uh, Jim, did you have a follow-up? No follow-up from Jim? All right, so um, uh, just, again, not trying to um, do anything other than capture um, the three things that I have heard, and these are not in order. We have uh, the your, your top combined response, we have the international code, and then Mark just gave us the reference to um, the, uh, the statute or, or from 360. Those are the three that are on the screen, just for ease of quick reference for you. Um, again, this is non-binding. I just want to get a sense of where we are at. The, the first uh, poll, uh, which I'm going to ask the ODF uh, team to put up is the poll on do you support ODF's um, pr uh, proposal for using the international WUI code? And then I'll ask about the uh, what I'm defining here as the SV360 definition. And then I'll ask for any other uh, uh, polling that you all think we should take so that your recommendations are captured the best they can within the constraints of this process, which you know are obviously meaningful. So uh, ODF, could you put the first polling question up, which is the question about uh, the ODF recommendation to use the international WUI code? So it's uh, it's the same poll as you've uh, seen um, in in the past. And you can go in and then if you want to put your reasoning for your one, two or three vote, please go to the chat and, 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 and put those words there and we'll get a, a sense of where we are at um, at that point. Hey, Sam, I'm confused yes, by sir. the question in the poll. We're, um, please fire away. Okay, that's the wrong poll, folks. ODF. It's the, um, the it's the uh, poll number two, which is, do you accept the ODF proposal? So, um, if you could put that one up. There you go. Thanks, Mark Eagle Eye. Mark Long got us straight. I appreciate that. So this is, do you support the ODF proposal, international definition? Give it another 30 seconds or so. All right, we'll end the poll and we do not have a consensus. We have a um, 13 people voting a one, two people voting a two and eight uh, uh, people voting a three, which is a refusal to make that recommendation. So go ahead and, and uh, share the results for that, please. And then I'll promise to get Kyle Williams in, in a second here. All right, you can stop sharing. ODF. All right, uh, so um, I had Kyle and Marianne in the queue, and then we'll, there'll be other polls to follow. Thanks, Sam. And maybe maybe I'm jumping uh, jumping the gun on you here, and, and it's our next conversation. I was, for purposes of education in terms of of my vote, I was wondering if if folks might be able to to talk to me about why the 360 definition, where we where we do sort of narrow it, we are talking about a concentration of of structures in that urban or suburban setting. 
um, what's the downside of that approach? I understand 360 and its weaknesses relative to the Forest Protection District and potentially even tying it to the definition of forest land, although it is very broad in the way ODF uh, executes that. But say we fix those, what's the downside of the geographical area where the concentration of structures in urban or suburban setting exists? That, that, it, that's my question, because the, 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 there are others that work with this a lot more than I do, and I'm looking for education here. So I, I'm going to turn that over to Tim, but after I would like to hear first, I'd like to hear Mary Ann's comment so Tim can respond to both if, um, at the same time. Mary Ann? Yeah, and I apologize. Um, I think I missed most of the discussion. Um, so I don't mean to, to bring up, you know, it sounds like others have had it well covered, but I will just say that the, this the international WUI definition was the one that failed to reach consensus in the legislature and resulted in it being kicked to rulemaking. And so I would view it as inconsistent with the legislative intent for the RAC to not modify it at all. Um, and the definition in the WUI code of structures is incredibly broad. And so if we're pulling in that WUI code, but then somehow intending to change the definition of structures down the road, I, I don't see how that is consistent with using the international WUI code. And so I, my, my strongest preference and my, my biggest point of disagreement would be to delete structures and other human development and actually say what kinds of human development we need. Um, because from the beginning of this conversation legislatively, we were promised by proponents and by legislators, oh, no, 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 we don't mean things like fences or roads or trails. Um, and if that is true, and those are truly under the definition of structures right now, let's say what we mean. Um, that is the cornerstone of, of legislative intent and also the cornerstone of good rules is to say what you mean. And I don't understand why we would adopt a definition where we are plainly not saying what we mean. Thank you for that. Tim, do you want to um, uh, comment or respond? And then I'll call on uh, Mary Kyle and Dylan. So right now, I think in the interest of uh, discussion, I'd like to hear, and I'm taking notes to address any uh, questions here, and I'll answer everyone at once. Perfect. Mary Kyle. Thank you. I, I, I think all of us who are involved in the legislation can share our differing views of what it was, what it meant. And I think that's a little water under the bridge at this point. And I'd rather get to what we want to do in this rulemaking. I don't really want to relive with each of our personal um, interpretations of that. I do not agree that we are going to be facing redefining the word or uh, redefining how we define the WUI later um, or having to go back and change it. Let me say that. I don't think we're going to have to go back and change it if we adopt the international WUI code. I think that gives us the flexibility that we need to define it later in the process. I'm not sure what structures could or should mean, but I'm fairly certain it, it is not as narrow as a concentration of structures in an urban or suburban setting, because I'm not sure that would capture all of the communities that burned in last year's fire. I'm not sure they would meet that definition. I don't know where things like other concentrations of humans in a rural setting fit, like temporary seasonal worker housing or youth camps or concentrations of workers in um, industrial and commercial facilities in rural areas that might not be in urban or suburban settings. I don't know how that fits into this. And I think we need to have those discussions and define it in the next step. But I think that the WUI definition as set out gives us the flexibility to do that and to also discard things that we can all agree are not going to be part, should not be part of this, like fences potentially. Um, but I, th I think the Senate Bill 360 or any part of that is too narrow at this point for us. And we should go with the International WUI Code. Thank you. Dylan? I don't have anything to add. I think Mary Kyle said it well. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Tim, a quick response. Um, primarily to address uh, Kyle's question about uh, why we did not put uh, look into more of what was previously SB 360 is uh, twofold. Um, the term forest land is statutorily restricted to within ODF protection districts. So, um, so, and at that point, it lead and the uh, the need of this or the direction of this is would be on a statewide scale. So that takes out inside forest protection districts. 
So you're left with a geographic area where exists a concentration of structures in an urban and suburban setting. Um, that one without a significant additions removes the, uh, the wildland references. So that's why it would have been a restructured um, for, or restructured uh, um, inconsistent definition at that point. So that's why uh, that was uh, not considered very heavily. Um, it was looked at that initially, but just the constraints of uh, the um, forest land and forest protection districts uh, eliminated it. Yeah, thanks, Tim. I, I guess I was under the impression it was a, uh, it wasn't an either or uh, conversation. I was under the impression, you know, with the appropriate uh, hacking, we could put those two together. So maybe, maybe I was wrong. All right, um, we have Amelia next. Thanks. I just, um, I just wanted to quickly mention that the uh, while this uh, WUI definition was kicked to rulemaking, the one thing that the bill did clearly do was strip out that 360 definition. So it, it did um, actually remove that definition. And uh, so I think it would be unusual if we were to bring it back into the rulemaking phase when that was the thing that was deleted from statute in the bill. Thanks. All right. Uh, Mary Carol, did you have a follow up? Okay, thank you. So um, it, it's clear that we're not going to achieve a, a consensus in, in the limited time we have available, but because I believe um, that the, 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 both the department and the board want the full spectrum of RAC member views, I am going to ask uh, uh, for two more polls so that everything everyone has an opportunity to have their uh, voice heard. The first poll, uh, which I'll ask staff uh, to pull up, is one of the um, polls where there's no question um, in it. But the question will be, the question will be, um, uh, do you support uh, SB, the SB 360 definition? So this may well be the mirror image of what we just did, but for clarity, there was enough folks there. So the question enough for poll number three is, do you support the SB 360 definition that is on your screen? And again, you can, I promise to get you in a second, you can put it in the chat then, uh, you, your views. So who had the question or comment? Sam, this is Holly. Oh, hey, Holly. Are, when you say support the uh, SB 360 definition, are you meaning with some kind of modification to that forest protection district language that was problematic? So right now it is as written. If you want to deal with the forest uh, land protection district language, you would vote a two and then say you would change the forest protection district language to what, uh, whatever you think is the proper language. So it gives you an opportunity. So it's 360 as a general structure, but you want to amend uh, the language, which I'm hearing most folks seem to think needs to be dealt with, which is this forest protection district kind of thing. And you would put that reason in. And thank you for the clarification. Hey, Sam, I'm going to speak up real quick. This is Tanner. Um, I'm actually okay. an, yeah, an go ahead, alt. <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm an alt rack. So Sean, I think, is going to be voting on behalf of OFMA. But I have a pull up on my screen. I don't know if that's going to affect the polling process. Just wanted to bring that up. Uh, so yeah, you would be asked to please just have one member per organization vote because this is not Chicago. <laughs> so am I just closing out of the poll and that way it doesn't affect the, the uh, you can process. keep it open and watch it. Uh, Perfect. Okay. Go. Yeah. All right. Give you a, give you another thirty seconds here. And again, the where the the rubber is going to hit the road is by putting in the the chat feature the reasons for um, especially for the two and the three. All right. I, we'll I, I don't have a poll. You're not seeing a poll, Mary Kyle? I didn't. Uh, we have um, 19 people responding. Okay. Uh, um, 
why don't you just tell us orally what you would do? What's the question? The question is, uh, would you recommend the uh, SB 360 definition, okay. uh, which is on the screen there? Okay. And you would vote two if you, uh, you generally right. support it, but you want to deal with the, the Forest Protection District thing. All right, final poll, and then we'll move on to, uh, to the next phase. Is um, and so you can close this poll, please, and go to the poll number four. I believe you've named it. We've named it, and that is just to see what people's reactions are. So you have as much information as possible. Is the um, the this first one, uh, this is the, the top responses to the poll. So we I simply took the most frequently suggested word for each of the components and put it together in this sentence. Um, and again, these aren't mutually exclusive. We're just trying to get the full pulse of what may work as a, as a RAC recommendation to the de department to make to the board. So if you can get, vote one, two, or three on that. And just out of curiosity, Mary Kyle, do you have poll number four on your screen now? Um, no. Um. Okay, well, um, if you could just put in the chat, your response will incorporate it. Amelia. Um, I just, I have a poll, but it says untitled question. So I'm not exactly sure what we're answering. The, 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 the uh, it is entitled. And the question which I'm calling orally is your support for the top polling result. This was the, you, you all took a poll. Um, I took the top, choices from each of the components and this was the result so it'd be your reactions to that can you read that again then sam no problem it's wildland urban interface means the geographical area where human development meets wildland fuels again wooey means the geographical area where human development meets wildland fuels. Give you another 30 seconds or so folks. And again, uh, uh, what will be most helpful to the department and ultimately the board is the comments you put in the chat for your reasoning, especially for the twos and threes. All right, um, we've done as much as we can on this issue, um, it, given the constraints uh, of time, uh, which uh, we all recognize. Uh, so I will stop sharing uh, my screen here and we will turn it over uh, to Tim, who is going to comment on the fiscal impact statement um, and do an introduction as to that. I'm gonna reshare my screen here. So I'm just going to share it off the main um, PowerPoint slide deck. So um, as, in, as I referenced, or we chatted a little bit last week, there was a desire for a little more information about what is the, re the requirements and the, the uh, roles of, the, of a rules advisory committee and to meet this purpose. Um, for our meeting next week, there will be a preparation of a statement of need. That is what that's going to look like is uh, essentially the filling the, the expectations of Senate Bill 762. 
is going to be the, the statement in need. It's going to be very uh, simplistic and straightforward. As far as information and specificity into what will be going into the statement of fiscal impact, there's a very clear identification or very clear um, considerations to uh, that to be taken into account. Primarily, uh, who is to be economically affected by the rules? State agencies, local governments, members of the public. Is there a cost to comply with the definition of the WUI? And of important note is the fiscal impact statements need to address the impact of the proposed rule change from the current status quo rather than the overall impact of the entire rule. So we're looking specifically at the establishment of the uh, definition of wildland urban interface. I'm gonna leave that here at the moment. Uh, any questions? Um, Marianne. Yeah, so I presume then because we are going with that, you know, because it sounds like the, the fiscal impact will be de de um, developed based on the structures and other human development and we won't know whether and how future refinements are being made, the analysis will be done as if the WUI is going to map fences, trails, um, irrigation, infrastructure, all of that kind of stuff. And I should come prepared with potential impacts of doing, for example, defensible space around some of those, if they were to be in a higher moderate risk classification. The fiscal impact statement will be prepared around um, the definition of the wildland urban interface. Since there are no tie-ins to what that definition means right now, there is no impact. That's going to be ODF's position is that there's no impact to this rule? Through, through what's, um, what was presented in the, the definition itself as the sole source of the, uh, the stance of the, or where the financial impact statement is addressed with the definition. Have you the run that past your DOJ? I, I'm not convinced that that meets the APA requirements at all, given how broad this definition is and what could potentially flow from it. So Tim, um, if you, um, that, that bottom bullet on the screen, um, it says below it, um, Department of Just, whoop, yeah, there you go. Department of Justice model rules. Is that, is that, uh, Marianne, is that what you're wondering? Did the DOJ approve this position? Is that what you're asking? Yeah, I mean, I agree that the, the statement needs to only um, address the impact of the rule change from current status rather than the overall impact of the entire rule. But it does have to address the impact of the rule change from current status. And for our members, that leaves us open to potential regulation of pretty much every, everything that we do on our property. Um, which, and so I, I do think that needs to be addressed in the fiscal impact statement. Okay. Uh, John, actually it's Lauren, then John, and then Pam. Um, I was just going to ask, I know in other rulemakings, um, AOC and I know LSD probably the same have received um, requests to provide our fiscal impact. And I know why I haven't seen this come through at AOC, so I'm not sure um, if uh, ODF plans on reaching out to local government, because I think our, our we may have a different uh, position on uh, the fiscal impact of that um, than to just say there's no fiscal. And I don't recall having seen that come through as, a, as local governments to provide that information to ODF yet. Jim? Well, uh take note of that and take that into account. John? Hey guys, so, you know, my feeling about this, I've, I've written lots of rules, lots of rules, some really controversial ones too, and, uh, and I've been involved in the development of lots of fiscal impact statements. Um, I, based on that, you know, literally career of experience, I don't, I don't think this is a big deal. I just don't. Uh, it couldn't be, uh, but when that time comes, I think is is with the with the further conversation. Um, I would not be uncomfortable as a as a lead staff moving forward. Um, and again, with that's just a, a, a career of 
conversations with DOJ and with my leadership on on rules, um, you know, moving forward, uh, I agree that we don't know that there's going to be any fiscal impact uh, based on this. It doesn't seem to change the status quo in a way that would be negative to anybody. Um, if it does change the status quo, it seems like it would be positive uh, more so than otherwise. So I know I just I just wanted to share that and. And I would just I would just encourage folks not to get high centered on that, um, and we need to uh, continue to move forward in a in a productive manner. Thank you. Thank you, John. Pam. Thanks so much. I just wanted to say that I think our fiscal impact statement can only be as specific as the actual um, the actual rule that we're putting in. There are so many details that are going to be spelled out in the criteria that we're going to be working on over the next few months that the fiscal impact of this definition could either be negative or positive. And as far in either direction, I think our fiscal impact statement needs to acknowledge that, that it simply isn't complete at this point. And I can really understand Mary Ann's concern um, regarding rural folks and not wanting things like, you know, fences and irrigation and stuff like that to be um, considered human development, but that's what's gonna get defined. That's what's going to happen in the criteria portion of this. It hasn't happened yet. Thank you, Pam. Roger? Yeah, thank you. So I guess I would completely disagree in that, unless I'm reading the wrong areas, the current rule only applies to forest protection districts. So while the new rule will be statewide, whether it's undefined or un, the criteria has been defined or not, it's going to expand where it applies to from currently only inside forest protection districts to statewide. So to say there would be no fiscal impact was just ludicrous because all those people who are outside forest protection districts now have no impact and they will. So there has to be a fiscal impact, no matter, no matter how you end up defining the criteria. That's my opinion. Thank you for that. Uh, the, the cue now that I have is Mary Ann. Amanda and Mark. So Mary Ann, please take it away. No, I actually, I, I feel like Pam said it well um, in that I, I don't think it's fair to say no fiscal impact. I, I think that's absolutely wrong. Um, I do think it is impossible to determine the fiscal impact, but because it is apparently the intentional will of the group to not take anything off the table, I do think we have to acknowledge that the fiscal impact will depend on future steps. And that could include, for example, I mean, Mary Kyle gave examples of things that I presume a thousand friends intends to regulate that would unequivocally have a fiscal impact on our members. Um, and so depending on where the criteria is, um, the fiscal impact of this definition could be incredibly large because if you had narrow, if we had narrowed the definition, for example, to a concentration of dwellings, we wouldn't have those future conversations about irrigation ditches and irrigation pumping equipment and county roads and um, recreational trails and all of those things that we are going to have to address down the road. And it sounds like, you know, there's not group consensus on if there was group consensus on it just being dwellings, I would think we would say that. And so given that there we're not saying dwellings and we are saying structures and other human development, that suggests to me that there is an intention to regulate more broadly than structures, and therefore that there will be a fiscal impact on my members that's likely to be significant, and that needs to be acknowledged in the fiscal impact statement. All right, thank you, Amanda and Mark. I promise to call on you. I just need to do a quick audible with members of the public who might want to do public comment so that depending on how many member uh, members of the public would like to speak, then if there's not many, we can use more time to discuss this issue. So um, if you are um, a member of the public who would like to make a public comment, if you could put a quick note in the chat with your, uh, just, say, uh, uh, just say public comment, and then I can figure out how many of you there are and, uh, and reevaluate the timing going forward. So members of the public, please put it in the chat if you would like to be in the public comment queue. Give you another five seconds here, just to put yourself in the queue. 
Um, hearing none, I will reallocate um, the public comment time to this discussion. I believe the order I had was Amanda, then Mark. Yeah, thanks, Sam. I just have a, perhaps a naive question. Um, the, the rulemakings that I've seen, the fiscal impact statement is done at the end of the rulemaking, and this is sort of midway. So are we doing a fiscal impact for the definition and then another fiscal impact for the criteria? Or I guess I'm just a little bit confused as the, you know, the order of operations here. Yeah. Yes, they are doing a fiscal impact on the rule filing for the definition, and then there will be another fiscal impact statement to go with the uh, initial rule filing for the criteria um, in March. Okay, thank you, uh, Mark. Thanks for your patience. Yeah. Hey, Tim, just want to flag for you. There's a, also a housing impact uh, fiscal statement process. I'm not sure that this triggers it or not. I don't know if you've looked at that. But just want to flag that for you. Might want to check with your team. Okay. Yep. Thank you for uh, bringing that up, Mark. We've been uh, we've been looking through that uh, the checklist to make sure we got it all accounted for. But appreciate that. Uh, Tim, did did you want to continue uh, your presentation, uh, pre prepared presentation on the fiscal impact, or are you uh, have you done what you need to do on that? I'm uh, complete with what I had there. Okay. Um, any other comments on um, on what is going to happen um, or thoughts about the fiscal impact statement process? Hearing none, um, uh, to summarize uh, my understanding for Tim's confirmation or editing that um, ODF will take the comments received from the RAC member today. Today, uh, RAC members today consider them, put forth a uh, ODF proposed fiscal impact statement. Uh, it will uh, consider the request uh, to send out a request for uh, comments from various organizations uh, that uh, were mentioned. And um, at that meeting uh, next Tuesday, we will have the ODF staff report on the WUI recommendation process. This will be supplemented by the meeting summary, uh, which I will do, which will include the various polls and the, um, the portions of the chat that speak to why people voted uh, one, two, or three, so it's all laid out there um, without um, editorial comments, simply just here are the facts. And um, at the next uh, next meeting, then, uh, this phase of RAC 1 will be uh, concluded. Tim, is, is that an accurate summary of your intent? Yes, that is correct. And I also understand that you will not be with us at tomorrow, uh, next week's meeting, but that someone in, uh, will be there uh, in your seat. Yes. And you might introduce who that person is. And... Let's see, Jenna, are you on the, uh, will mind popping up your camera? So uh, Jenna Trentadu will be uh, sitting in for me next week and uh, we'll be, uh, presenting the, uh, the the staff report of what will be presented to the Board of Forestry, as well as the uh, um, fiscal impact statement as drafted, taking into account the comments today, um, as well with uh, the meeting next week, we'll be uh, walking through what we'll be looking at as a work, initial work plan for both terms to be um, defined and clarified, as well as criteria concepts to um, present to the group and then also take feedback on where you all are seeing uh, um, if there's any gaps or other criteria that you'd like to be considered for the process so that we can uh, bring that back together for when we are and pull together a, a work plan for when we uh, reconvene in September. So. All right, uh, thank you and, and Jenna, good luck next week. Um, the, I'm going to call a homework audible here. Um, 
how many, just by show of hands, how many RAC members would like the opportunity to uh, submit as, as part of the record a couple page, I'm not going to be hard over on if it's one, two, three, or whatever, but a concise statement uh, on your, your thoughts about A, the uh, wooey definition polling, which I'll turn around and get out to you so you have the record where you can supplement your reasons for support, twos or threes, and B, comments about the fiscal impact statement. So let's take them one at a time. How many RAC members would like the opportunity to be able to submit um, a, a, a statement in response to the meeting notes about your thoughts on um, the WUI definition? If you just put your little hand up and see. So there's a sufficient number. Um, uh, I, I want everyone to have the opportunity to do that in your own words. I understand that forced, being forced to put cryptic notes in a chat um, on the fly is not the most robust way of doing that. So I'll send out homework with the meeting notes. And then secondly, how many of you would like to do uh, similar think comments about the fiscal impact statement to have um, your voices heard as part of uh, the meeting notes? similar response. All right, so the, I, I will send out, we will, I will do the meeting summary um, ASAP, get that out to you with some homework. It, it's not going to be uh, restrained in the format other than suggest that um, you be as concise as you, as you can, but recognize your, um, you may say, obviously, whatever you would like about either of those two topics. We'll roll them up They'll be part of the final meeting notes and we can go forward. Uh, so um, before I call on, on John, I wanna give the public last call, any member of the public, uh, I appreciate your patience and waiting, but I wanted to give you a last call if you have any public comment you would like to share with this uh, August group. Peggy, are you, Lynch, are you turning on your camera to speak? did really quickly. Thank you, Peggy Lynch, League of Women Voters of Oregon. We simply want to say we appreciate the work that the RAC is doing, and we support the ODF recommendation on the way definition. We believe that the fiscal impact right now is indeterminate. Uh, there is no way to know for sure exactly what it is until uh, additional work on the entire uh, bill happens. So it makes sense to, to use the word indeterminate in the fiscal. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Ms. Lynch. Uh, I, had, I think I had John Jen Jennings in the in the queue. John? No, thank you. My hand was uh, inadvertently left out. Apologize for that. No problem. We've put placed a note in your permanent record as a result. Um, thank you. Uh, last call from RAC members. Last call from ODF. Timony, closing comments. Appreciate you all uh, walking through the process uh, with it step by step. We realize it's a little disjointed trying to take a leap of faith on a definition, but uh, with leaving that to your all uh, considerations as we move forward with this process, I believe we can get to a place that that uh, hits the needle and is effective and helps advance fire protection within the state of Oregon. So really appreciate all your time, commitment, all your efforts, energy, and uh, passion with this subject. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Go forth, do good, avoid evil, and we'll see you next Tuesday. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.